Inside this box is a product that brings back memories. Not only for me, but there's a good chance for you too. Stay tuned as today I'm going to show you a product that, when it was launched, was the highest tech product of this time. And that starts right now on The Gadget Guru. Before I get started, allow me to take a moment to thank my friend Lois Haynes for sending this over to me. Now, when she heard that I was part of the team that launched this product nearly 45 years ago, without hesitation, she boxed it up and sent it over to me. So thanks, Lois. So without further delay, let's open the box and check it out. Oh, my. what I t this, this truly does. I mean, as you can tell, I'm speechless. This truly does bring back memories. Here, let me go and get these out of the box. You'll see what I mean in just a moment here. And look at the condition of these. Lois, you're just an angel. Check this out. Now, this is Texas Instruments Speak and Spell. Now, here, I tell you what, I'm a little bit flustered by seeing all this. Let me start over again. This is Texas Instruments Speak and Spell. I'm, you, I'm blown away. Look at the condition of the boxes and everything. Lois told me this thing was perfect. I can't believe it. Now, it utilized TI solid state software technology to store full words on a chip. This operated in a similar manner. TI calculators used to store numbers and have them appear on the LEDs and LCDs. But like many of TI's innovation, it was an industry first. Now, the Speak and Spell was designed to be a tool to help children ages 7 and up to learn to spell and pronounce over 200 commonly misspelled words. With the use of solid state cartridges, and she sent me three of them right over here, it was expandable with more words and games. The basic unit contained various learning games, such as mystery word, secret code, and letter. Okay, we have now got to open this up and to give it a demo. She said it worked. We're about to find out. I want to open this carefully. Look at this. Texas Instruments, Dallas, Texas, ages 7 and up. I tell you, this thing looks like it's just never been used. Oh, I remember this. You, you know, you know what's interesting about this. Let me hold this up to the camera. You see, you see this right here? Yeah, maybe if I hold it up to this camera, you can see it a little bit better. I remember. You know what? What? What brings back a memory about this? This was typed on an IBM typewriter and then copied. These were those IBM typewriters with the little ball. This was the standard font that we used in all Texas Instrument communications, you know, in the office or when we're writing letters. This is a little note about, you know, some caution when inserting the module and how to do it properly. We have the parent's guide for C cells required. Okay. Nope, I have to go put some batteries into it. I'll be right back. Now, if you notice, it's not a QWERTY keypad. It's an alphabetical keypad. And if I remember correctly, that was kind of a conversation back there in the offices of which way to do it. And since they were going to young kids, and remember, this is well part of the days of the Internet, they decided that alphabetical would be the best way. You are correct. Next, spell color. Okay, I'm going to intentionally misspell this word. K O L O R. Wrong. Try again. Color. Now I'm going to spell it correctly so you can hear the positive reinforcement. So what's my connection to the speak and spell? Well, in 1977, well prior to my gadget guru days, my first corporate job out of college was with Texas Instruments. My official title was field sales engineer with the consumer products division. 
The focus of this division was the sales and marketing of a wide range of calculators, digital watches, and electronic learning aids, such as the Little Professor, which was launched in 1976, two years prior to the Speak and Spell. While those items were noteworthy, the technology contained inside the Speak and Spell was truly astounding for that time. A talking product may seem like a no-brainer these days, but back then, considering that adding a percent key on a handheld calculator was a big deal, having a voice that speaks on command and programmed onto a chip was a major accomplishment. This was the first time that an educational toy featured speech that was not recorded on a tape or phonograph record. Remember Chatty Cathy and See and Say? Well, those didn't have near the level of technology found in the Speak and Spell. While consumer products were a small portion of TI's business, as semiconductors were their growth area, they knew the amount of brand recognition consumer products brought to their company and spent big bucks promoting the Speak and Spell and their learning products on network TV. Here, let's take a look. He's learning spelling with Texas Instruments Speak and Spell. Spell, rain, R-A-I-N, that is correct. She's teaching her brother with Speak and Spell. H-E-R, that is right. They're learning new words with Speak and Spell, but don't tell them they're learning. They just think they're having fun. Speak and spell for words, speak and read for stories, speak and math for numbers. From Texas Instruments, they make learning fun. Now, while in a sales meeting, when the early commercials were shown to us, I was one of those who spoke up and said they were boring and needed to be as exciting as the products themselves. They also had to appeal to kids as well as the parents. It was my suggestion, and don't laugh, to hire Bill Cosby as he appealed to kids with his Jell-O commercials. While some of those, and I say they did, while some in the meeting laughed at me, the marketing folks went to work and brought Mr. Cosby into the fold. Trust me, at that time, this was a great marketing decision, and the increase of sales having him associated with the brand was notable. Here, here's an example of a Bill Cosby commercial. Sleep yet? Let's look. Spell says S A Y S. That is correct. You said speak and spell could help me spell better. Mm hmm. It's from Texas Instruments. I'm learning a lot, really. Yes, but you don't want to look like this in the morning, do you? Now go to sleep, please. Texas Instruments speak and spell makes learning what it should be fun. I've been looking all over for this. The Speak and Spell was also found in movies such as E.T. and used in a comedy bit by Albert Brooks on The Tonight Show with Johnny Carson. Simply stated, the Speak and Spell was a big winner for Texas Instruments and was a precursor to many of the products we use today. Allow me to add, of all the companies that I worked for in my lifetime, Texas Instruments was the best. Working there, was the equivalent of earning your MBA as they placed much trust in their sales team in providing by model, by month forecasts that we had to place on handwritten spreadsheets and updated monthly and presented to management every quarter. The factories relied on our forecasts to create production schedules. It was a lot of responsibility and was quite the learning experience. The folks I had the pleasure of working with at TI were the best of the best. We worked hard, and we all got along very well. So thanks, Lois. This does bring back some great memories. Now spell angel. One more thing. If you like this video, you're going to like this one. And if you like that one, you're going to like one of these. That's it for now. I'm the Gadget Guru, Andy Parr.